Alright, so I just got in some of these new PCBs. Now, this is not something I haven't done before, especially I definitely made a video for these white ones. Uh, but what this is, this is a MBC3 flash cart with real-time clock. This is the revision 1.4.1 that my buddy HDR made. It's the exact same thing as these white ones that I made. Uh, the only difference is that the footprints of the board itself, these use smaller, cheaper 0603 resistors and capacitors. Uh, it has a better cutout for the crystal, um, has a better footprint for the AM29 chip. In other words, these should be easier to assemble um, compared to the white ones that I have here. Uh, I just got these in. I want to see if I can't get that assembled and see if we can't make another cart here. Um, because I ordered these from Osh Park, they do come with these tabs across the the PCBs here because of how they're panelized together. I did already had go ahead and uh, shave one of these down, so I do have one ready to assemble. But first, we need our donor here. Uh, this is Card Trade Hero or something, Card Hero. If you search DMG A H H J dash J P N, you'll you'll find this specific game. But anyway, I bought a bunch of these because they were like a dollar a pop, and I still have quite a few donors left over. But we need to salvage a few parts from this game here. Um, I'm going to be using a heat gun for that, and you definitely want to, discharged or not, you need to remove the battery. Otherwise, it'll um, explode, and that's bad. All right. So normally I would just want this MBC3 chip and this battery management chip, uh, but unfortunately I don't actually have all of the parts that I need, so I'm going to be salvaging a little bit more than that today. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to try and salvage as much as I possibly can, so I'm going to go ahead and desolder everything on this board, including the, well, yeah. I don't know. I do have crystals, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so anyway, bear with me a moment. Just clearing off my desk, making sure there's nothing too close here. I'm going to break out the heat gun. Um, and for the actual desoldering here, I'm going to try and use my ceramic tweezers so I don't burn myself. The only th two things I don't care about are the SRAM and the uh, MASCROM. But I'll probably desolder those anyway because it's right there. Uh, but otherwise, getting my heat gun here. Headphone users, beware. That's uh, just a cheapo 1500 watt. I'm using it on high. I'm just going to hit it with heat and then uh, see what happens. Sticking, what the hell? There we go. Eh. I'll just leave the rest. I don't need it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this a few minutes to cool down, and probably the camera, because that probably absorbed a lot of heat, and I can only make it absorb, or... Er, overheat quicker. Uh, but anyway, I need to pay attention. I believe this is the capacitor that I need. And 
C1, so that would be this one. I need these two capacitors. C1, C4, not C4, but C2. These two capacitors, I'm sorry. And not this one. I also don't think I need this capacitor. Or the other one that I accidentally blew away. Here it is. I don't think I need either of those two. Actually, all three of these should be 0.01 UF, and these two should be, I believe, 15 PF. So maybe I'll try reusing those. But otherwise, I'm going to let this cool down, let this heat bubble dissipate, and uh, I'll be back in just a second. Okay, and I'm back. So that bubble, by the way, it's not a pocket of hot air or anything. It's just because the silicone mat itself... The temperature is getting so hot in the center, the material itself is just expanding and it pushes it up. Um, unfortunately, I have, like, you, you can't just lift up the side and let the air out because it's not air that's trapped, it's the material itself. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this assembled, yeah? There's that. So I. that, there's that. So I've got here a freshly flashed chip in my uh, reader. I actually sat here for a few minutes before I started filming, literally just uh, trying to straighten out the pins because it was all bent up. Okay. I think I have enough parts and all goes well. So one of the nice things about this new PCB instead, uh, these top four or these four corner uh, pads are a little bit wider just to kind of help with the positioning. It doesn't matter so much for the um, the AM20, the two megabyte chips, but for the four megabyte chips that aren't, uh, don't have the four megabyte chips are a, a different footprint. So I'm going to go ahead and line up one side here. I probably should have put solder on the iron first. Definitely need flux, but I'm not trying to do a good job, just trying to do a good enough job. Line up the other side and do the same thing. That's terrible, but it's okay for now. Now's, now's where the flux comes in. No, I can still put flux on. Some delicious new clean flux. Straighten that out. I'm going to need some more flux, but that's okay. I was about to move this, huh? I suppose I should get started on the other side.
I'm doing a not very good job of this. I think it's a lot easier with my old flux, but the cleanup with my old flux is so much more of a pain in the butt that I'd rather struggle with this. This stuff just evaporates so quickly, or uh, burns up, I guess. But that could be related to uh, my skill or technique or something. You know, it's probably it's probably working how it's supposed to. I'm having a hard time getting rid of this bridge here. Keep adding flux till it works. More flux is more better. Okay, this isn't working. I'm going to use the solder braid. There we go. Don't mind my cat. He's just saying hi. Okay. There we go. Those last two pins, of course, are bridged together on all sides, but that doesn't matter at all. The thing I'm concerned about is it looks like there's a couple bridges on this side still. So. I'm going to add more flux yet again. There we go. Now this one I'm struggling with. The last three pins are bridged. It really doesn't matter. Because the last two pins are not connected to anything, but I don't like I don't like that. It looks it looks bad. And if I don't fix it now, I never will. Okay, there we go. Right, now, I suppose let's, ooh, let's knock some stuff around. Let's do the MBC3 chip. I need to lift that up a little. Okay. So I'm going to do my best to line up three of the sides here. Of course, I don't have any extra solder on my iron. There we go. Okay. 
I'm not sure how it's stuck down, but it appears to be stuck down. There we go. Yeah, that should do. All right. There we go. When soldering this down the first time, I don't really care if there are any bridges. I just want to make sure that all of the pins are soldered. So for example, I'm going to bring this up. You can see the last two pins, there's solder on them, but not on the PCB. And then one of those pins, there's solder on that, but not on the PCB. I want to make sure that Basically, the solder goes all the way down to the PCB as well, and then we can clear up bridges later. Good lord, someone is noisy. Add some flux. I'm going to have a hard time with this, I have a feeling. I think I always do. Perfect. Now I won't touch that side anymore. This chip is my least favorite to solder, by the way. There it goes. Two sides done.
three sides done. And the last side. that's done. So now we need to solder on this chip. If I can even grab it. There we go. And that one, the pins are just far enough away to do it the easy way. Whoops. As I say that, there we go. All right. Two more chips and then just a bunch of little supporting components. Put the iron down for that. So we have U3, which is a not gate or something. I don't know. It's an OR gate. That's what it is. what's needed to uh, use the battery list saves that this PCB supports. I suppose you could probably omit it and just use SRAM, but you might have to do some rewiring. So this thing is supposed to be marked. Oh, it is. It's just ridiculously tiny. Last chip. These ones, you can buy them on DigiKey, but your best bet is probably AliExpress. Only problem with that is I think uh, some vendors will ship fakes, which don't work as well, or in some cases don't work at all. In this case, I'm pretty sure these ones work. I've already used one from this batch on a different cart. Pretty sure that cart worked. It's terrible, but it doesn't matter.
Again, just want to make sure there's solder on all the pins. And I'll clean it up later. camera cuts out, I apologize. I'll pause and pick up if it does, if I notice it in time. All right. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause for a couple minutes here, let the camera cool down. And while that's cooling down, I am going to clean up all this no clean. I know, right? But it leaves behind some residue if you don't. So whatever. All right, so I did actually clean up a couple shorts that I didn't spot while I was soldering earlier, uh, and I did just physically clean up the board. Otherwise, I think we're good to go ahead and get this finished and assembled. All of the capacitors are 0.1 UF, or 0.1 microfarad, uh, except for C4 right here, C4 right here and C5 right here, which are 15 PF or picofarad. Um, I'm pretty sure the two that I salvaged from the, uh, oops, from the other cart are uh, the values I want. So I'm going to go ahead and add those in here. The values for these components were taken from measuring the components on the original cart anyway, so by using the same components, we should be good to go. Now the only issue is that the components on the original cart, they might be in the same place, but they do not have the same label. So C4 on this cart is not C4 on the original cart. There we go. All right, next, oh, let's do the crystal. I forgot about that. The uh, crystal is just a um, 
32.768 kilohertz. Blah, blah, blah. The, if you do pull the original crystal off the cart, you can use that. Um, in fact, it should even be a little bit more accurate than these ones, the 12.5 PF or 20 PPM, whatever the hell. Um, but these will also work just fine. And it does not matter which pin goes where. All right, next I got two resistors here. Let's see what this is. This is, I can't read it, it's so freaking small. There are numbers on there. I doubt it's gonna come out on the camera. Um, 102, so I believe that is a uh, 10K resistor, or a 1k resistor excuse me so the 1k resistor goes to r3 here means this other one should be 330k and yes it is okay that one goes to R1 which is up here Should have waited to clean this board because I got to clean it up again. Okay, next we need R2 and then the rest of the capacitors and the battery holder. R2 is a 10K, which I could not salvage from the original board, but it's okay because I have plenty. Uh, unfortunately, these are 0805 resistors instead of the 0603 that this board takes, but I think it should still be fine. What the fuck? Let me get this thing open. There we go. And this goes to R2. You know, in hindsight, I think I put the wrong resistor right there on R3. I always get my surface mount codes mixed up, but that might not be the resistor I think it is. Last one, two, three, four, five capacitors. I think I have. I found these unlabeled 0603 capacitors. 
uh, so I have no idea what value they are, and I don't have a multimeter that's capable of measuring them. So I'm just going to hope they're 0.1 UF. Because I don't know... I don't know what they would be if they weren't. That is to say, I don't know why... why I would leave them unlabeled if they weren't 0.1 UF. That is terrible looking. So is that. What the hell am I doing? Okay, I think that's good, but I just can't get over how crooked these are. There we go. I did not expect that to work. Nice. One more component. So these batteries, let me, uh, one of the nice things about these carts, I suppose you could call it that. Um, I personally just prefer the tab batteries, but these carts are designed for, um, this is probably a terrible idea. But it's okay, there was no incident. These carts are designed for battery holders. In particular, oh, I hope these are the right ones. Uh, they're CR2020 or 2025 battery holders. I find that with my batteries in particular, they don't really usually make good contact. One solution would be to just pile a mound of solder on there, but that is super tacky and will not work long term. I'm not very happy with this either, but I think it should be fine long term. What I'm doing, 
just snipped off a little bit of copper tape here. I'm going to peel the backing off. Possibly. And then... I'm going to fold up a bit of it. so that it's thicker. And to ensure that I don't have to worry about the uh, tape insulating anything, like the adhesive layer. Slam that down there, and we'll solder this battery down, or battery holder. I'll start on this side. You gotta be careful with these things. Uh, it's gonna get super hot, but you also don't wanna press down in the middle or you'll make it bow. To be honest, this probably isn't that much better. But we'll try it. See what happens. we're all done so let me just clean up this flux real quick because if I don't do it now I'll probably never do it That's enough of that. I need to do a better job of that though. Let me... Oh, we need a battery, huh? I'm going to use some of these Maxell 2025s because that's what I got. That's convenient, I think. I hope. Slide right in there and uh, let's try it out, huh? Nice, got a Nintendo logo. Oh, yes. So I did flash the um, game beforehand because I have an adapter for my uh, Sandy Cart Reader. And I know it's not the current version, but it's what I had on my uh, reader. Okay. We want to be a rocket grunt, don't we? Start with the EV. 
I don't think I've ever done a playthrough that way. I probably still won't, but... I mean, I'm already in the middle of another playthrough. Uh, so we'll use pink bag. Purple pokey gear. Time, let's set it to the current time. So you know that I'm uh, up ridiculously late doing this stuff. No, I'm kidding. It's just so I can make sure it's actually advancing like normal. It is still Tuesday. I would not like to do that now. Let's save for soft reset. And this is so you can, uh, because you just obtain your Pokemon, so this way, because it saves like that, you can, uh, just reset the game and make sure, you know, try and farm for a shiny or something. I don't really care that much. Let's see if it saved. Well, that looks good. Time's right. It says continue. So there we go. I'm happy with that. Probably not going to play clear, crystal clear because I'm just going to reflash it with the actual current version instead of the beta version. Uh, but otherwise, I'm happy with that. I think this worked out nicely. And uh, 